folks, Tuesday night, welcome aboard uh, Murder Hobo Week Between the Rolls. Uh, also, special event tonight. Uh, this is our 400th episode. 400. 400. Uh, probably the worst one you're going to see. Uh, maybe not. Hard to say. Uh, but we're glad you're here. Uh, it is the Iron DM episode, so you know what that means. Hijinks uh, galore. I'll throw you the whole seat, but you'll only need the edge. (laughs) It's about time you revive that. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive if you want to shoot the shit about D&D. Join our Discord if you want to buy cool crap like a, I don't know, throw pillow or something Cthulhu-based. We had uh, two designs go up in the shop today. Hit tinyurl.com slash RPG swag. You can get a whole weird bunch of shit. Anywhere from stickers to a shower curtain. Not kidding. My wife loves that duvet where the king-sized one where it just has Cthulhu's face stretched all upon it. The color uh, or the black and white? The color. Really? Yeah. I, I, we hang that on the wall just before we go to sleep and Cthulhu watches us sleep. You have issues. Uh, but you know who doesn't have issues? Uh, the people with Pirate Dog Dice. So if you want some really cool dice that roll really well, uh, check them out on Twitter, at Pirate Dog Dice. And of course, don't forget, if your game stinks, unlike ours, ours smells like success in uh, 400 episodes, try some adventure scents from oddfishgames.com. Uh, they make a variety of scents, including uh, Kyle's favorite, uh, the Nostril Killer, Putrid Sewers. They also make something called the Shine System. So if you want to write like me, only much more gooder, check out their Shine System. It will help you write things. And they just announced today that their Kickstarter is almost here for how to RPG with your cat. So keep an eye on our Twitter page. Keep an eye on theirs. Take a look at it. Uh, also, they could use some help at Gen Con for their booth. They're willing to uh, pay some cash or uh, give you some stuff. And I will be killing a dog tonight. So uh, without further ado, Kyle, introduce yourself. Hey, I'm Kyle. How you doing? Outstanding. Uh, very good. Yeah. Dick. <laughs> uh, i'm just saying that this dick now has a uh, merchandise of his campaign on the uh on the uh little store so i'm, I'm good yeah, yeah first two you got your first got, two i need your... 17 more to catch up what was the second one i only saw the first i was just in awe at first i didn't even bother going to the second what was one the is colorized and the other is line art uh, you get the red like and yellow eyes. And I'm great. a big fan of the line art. So, but yeah, okay. uh, those were designed by Carol. So, yeah. kudos <gasps> to Carol. Kudos to Carol. Not even on the show tonight, but uh, we'll go ahead and plug you, Carol. She has a Twitch stream too, where she paints stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's the does. only thing nice I'll say about Carol. <laughs> David, up next. Yeah, that's me. Hey, I'm David. You are Murder Hobo Inc. As we I am over. Murder Hobo Inc. <laughs> we we established that tonight. Uh, hi, I'm David. I am on the Calamity campaign. Uh, I play on the A side and the B side, along with our producer Carrie and Rob and Jesse and Scott. Uh, yes, I play Ingve on that one, and then on our boys from Toe Town side of it, I play Crow, our rogue scout. Uh, I'm also Zadar in Cacophony. So yeah, I am all over the place, folks. For the time, <laughs> for the time being. Yeah, for the time being, time's getting short. Yeah. I guess we're coming start- to the end of our journey, huh? Finally. About yeah. time I killed you fuckers off. Uh, last, last <laughs> you almost did. Least, yeah, a couple times. Uh, last but not least, Ian, tell us about yourself. Hi. I am definitely just a human and not some horrible thing wearing a sack of flesh. No. Uh, so, Ian, I, I guess I've been here for, what, uh, six episodes, something like that? Um, and, uh, Probably more than that. Oh, yeah. Something. I, you, you'll lose count when you're cheating in the basement like this. Uh, and uh, glad to be part of the crew and I think that um, we all had a really good time at Murder Hobo Con so thank you to all the people that uh, played in the games that I ran and then attended the con in general there is some cool merch there uh, there's still opportunities to get cool merch like Frank was saying so uh, we're excited about hopefully bringing a round two 
What was that too much of a plug? Too much of a show? No, no, no. No, no. no usually we go into like 8, 10, 8, 12 by the time we get the intros out of the way. So this is kind of new. Uh, yeah, fast. <laughs> Folks, uh, we only had two offerings uh, this past week. Uh, the Margu guys had to scrub. Uh, the, otherwise, that would have been our 400th episode. So we had two, and it was campaign. So we will start you off with a recap of uh, retread, or cred, I think is what it's called, uh, from Kyle. And we're going to retread cred, obviously. I uh, mean by cred, man. Gosh. Uh, oh, oh, I need some what of that What didn't happen credit. in cred? Uh, all the all the fun stuff. I think uh, two campaigns ago, we ended with a scream from a drunk in a jail cell in the drunk tank, uh-huh. uh, and then to be a complete and utter dick, and to save my continue continuosity continuity continuity continuity. That's the one. Con- raisins con- take con- raisins. Ooh, I love raisin bran. Uh, we that's decided continents. to. Hold off on rolling. Is that the thing where you have to poop all the time? Yes. Okay, I got you. I got you. That's why I have the beard. Just like this show. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, To save the continuity, uh, we delayed rolling initiative for such a wonderful long period of time so that I could bring the monk back in and get all the players psyched (laughs) up for what was about to happen uh, and what they witnessed, the sounds of the screaming, turned out not to be the drunk but the well-armored and defended guard being torn and ripped to pieces by monstrous uh, ghouls just hungry for flesh uh the party managed to fend them off and even run one off uh and learn a few things like uh these weren't just your undead average ghouls in fact they weren't undead at all despite the fact that carol really thought they were undead despite having said multiple times these are living ghouls. Yeah, I don't think she heard of, the, of that before. It's just like, yeah, ghouls can be living. <laughs> mm-hmm. In this way, yes. Uh, having discovered that and figuring that must be where the rest of their crew uh, disappeared off to, down into the lava tubes, into the tunnels, uh, the captain of the island guard led them to the quickest access to the lava tubes the porta john in the stockade that he was fortunately way too large to fit in and so had to send the party in by themselves uh our missing sorceress cast many spells to help the party out uh which they really needed as they discovered the layer of two creatures even worse than ghouls that had been using the flesh and the bodies of their crewmates uh, on all sorts of stalagmites and stalactites uh, and endeavored to murder the party. Uh, gosh, what was going on after that? That was pretty horrific, dude. <laughs> that, well, did I describe it okay? Yeah, with the crew, Killing it's like, you know, Nibby, all that. I was like... Oh, poor Nebby, yeah. Nebby, yeah. I was like, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, they mentioned it to me. They, Kyle, I'm surprised you didn't make them roll a dread, roll, dread save. Mm-hmm. Like, Shit, I know I forgot something. <laughs> I was like, insanity's coming. <laughs> insanity's coming very quickly for them. Um, they did manage to slay the creatures that had been feasting on their flesh and making a nest down there, um, uh, almost at the cost of their monk, who was almost so close to being dead that night. Uh, despite everything I wanted, he rolled a natural 20 and managed to get out of it okay. Uh, they climb up the port john um, to discuss what had happened and at that moment the magistrate and one slick looking commander dressed in some plate mail comes in and uh, demands to know what the hell is going on and that was uh, cred last week we'll figure out what the hell was going on next week or not or not really honestly I don't like telling my players things. That's ridiculous. No one should ever have to tell their players what's actually well, going on. Players should have to figure it out. And if they can't figure it out, screw them. Yeah, exactly. The end of the world happens. It's fine. 
You know, nobody in Lord of the Rings talked to each other. That that, that thing could have been twelve pages. That thing could have ended in a terrible calamity. That I tell you what. Nice segue. Uh, ended in a terrible calamity if you were for Sauron, right? <coughs> for orc. Sure. Me. Nice. Where where's that uh, filthy mouth that you had in Green Room? That would have improved that. I have no it. idea what you're talking about. We I have no idea. Yeah. Are, are uh, you saying that this is a show for a mature audience only? I am saying that. Hey, I say that. I'm I inside right my, now, so I can't. <laughs> I save all of my cursing for when I run games. I mean, David can do, attest to that. Yeah, I can't attest to that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, now, really, you're the cleanest. Uh, that was the cleanest game I had <laughs> been in, in a long time, man. <laughs> well, you said you're my welcome. game was clean. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I'll take I have it. A sewer well, yeah, you didn't play my mothership on Morkborg. That was a little bit more fun. Nope. Anywho, Morkborg. Uh, folks, the second uh, scenario that we had should have been calamity, but due to a scheduling issue. Uh, no bueno, so we had to go off the rails and do a one shot. Uh, fortunately, David was there to go ahead and pick up the slack because he is omniscient and all present, he's almost a deity at Murder Hobo Inc. Uh, David, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, that horseshit mess I put on on Saturday. Oh gosh, okay, you mean fight them, city of faith? (laughs) That would be the one. I was going to say City of Flesh because we spent all that time at the temple. <laughs> so, of <laughs> SUNY. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yes. So, in that episode, we had actually a lot of people from the Calamity campaign <laughs> playing in that. We had myself, we had Carrie, we had Rob, and special shout out to Kevin. Oh my God, he made the show. <laughs> Second <laughs> appearance. Gotta do one more, Kevin. So, but uh, yeah, so we play, oh, uh, you know, four religious types, uh, making our way on a, I guess, semi pilgrimage uh, to the city of Fightum. Uh, in the course of our journey, our first encounter that we run into is, yeah, a challenge where we had to jump a crevasse. And uh, yeah, it rolled poorly and something came out of it. So yeah, yeah, carry and crawlers suck. So, but yeah, but as Frank pointed out, this turned out to be the, the thing of uh, the episode of the Pretty Boys because uh, as it turned out, Valiant was in on this one. There was a character I, I had played before in a, previous episode Wanker. the paladin Wanker. so uh yeah he's the he's the paladin kind of yeah, well i mean just questionable about his integrity he has a penchant for chardonnay anyway <laughs> yes wow. so anyway uh so we uh as we enter the city we're we're uh we're greeted uh by the guards. Uh, the guards also, I think, what they had uh, an envoy from the temples, or they they sent they, a message that we were running late. Yeah, they, they were they were aware that you guys from your colors were part of two religious organizations who were currently having a meeting, and you guys were late. They weren't very uh, disciplined guards. <laughs> well, and we're not very disciplined. <laughs> In religious figures either so uh so yeah so we all scatter to our you know respective meetings uh carrie who played moonbeam uh yeah who really hated that name love child uh, <laughs> uh went to her druid circle i went to the uh valiant went to the temple of tear and <laughs> Rob hung out in the, in the tavern because, yeah, he's he's, not the back characters. he's agnostic. So. <laughs> and then, yeah, yeah, he really is. He's the cat god. So uh, <laughs> our producer said, yeah, he's a god. Yep, cat god. So uh, anyway, so uh, yeah, and Kev with his character which went straight to the Temple of Sunni. We had meetings on the inside, you know, played it he up. What laid. happened at the meetings? Yeah, he got laid. 
So, but yeah, <laughs> anyway, uh, as it turns out, as we meet up, uh, everybody was coming to the Temple of Tear where uh, Valiant was. Uh, we meet up there. We are uh, Miss um, all over the place with this. Uh, missed on his way to the tap, or is it her? Is it is Miss? Yeah, pronouns don't matter. Male. Folks. Yeah, yeah. He, he's a male. Uh, what seems to be a child just runs right into him, drops a whole buttload of gold, and uh, Miss tries to help them. The kid scatters and takes off. And uh, that comes around because after we meet up in the square, we're on our way to the tavern, which we came up with a brilliant name for Frank's Tavern. So it's canon now, Frank. <laughs> sure. <laughs> You're never you wrote it down. You were yet. in such a good mood about that. Jesus. I okay. did write what's, it down. What's the name? He was drinking and drinking heavily. Lewis. I was drinking Bahama Mamas. So. He was. He was drinking heavy that night. So, yeah, everything was funny. Uh, what was the name of that, that tower? Episode. That's why I write shit down. Yeah. What was it? it? Loogies. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Loogies, home of the snotty shop. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. This sounds much like a Monkey Island 2 reference. Shout out to my six DOS friends that might know what I'm talking about. It's a, it, uh, Yeah, the snotty shot is actually uh, a raw oyster in a shot glass with whole grain alcohol and some kind of spice in it and lit on fire. That was their idea, not mine. <laughs> I don't know. I just came up with that off the head. That is a real shot in New Orleans. So uh, anyway, uh, uh, as we're making our way to Lugies and all that, uh, we come upon the site of uh, some cultists. Uh, you see them, they're dragging what Valiant thought was a child through the streets, uh, you know, uh, robe covering its head as it's being dra dragged by its feet and all that bits hanging out and all that. So Valiant stops them, almost starts a confrontation on it, saying how dare they, you know, expose this child like this and treat him like that. And it turns out it is a halfling. Yeah. We didn't see that there was a litter coming up behind us uh, with, uh, or a palisham or whatever it's called, a palanquin. Uh, I don't know. Um, with um uh, yeah a priestess yeah hot priestess hot priestess frank rolled for hotness uh yeah uh yeah come out and kind of assuage the situation and uh yeah they took custody of it of what turned out to be uh an adult halfling uh criminal who had stolen something from their temple and uh yeah Human, humanely treated him uh, at the request of the. Uh, it appeared that and death by snoo the snoo. That's yeah, right. He was probably dead by <laughs> after he got in there. So anyway, anyway, it all culminates. Uh, it turns out we find out that a gem had been stolen uh, from some kind of temple up in a volcano. Uh, yeah, uh, basically, it ends up shenanigans in a city. We end up at some. Shetty Hotel, uh, investigating, uh, uh, you know, uh, leads that we had found to strange people in the hotel. We confront them. We have this awesome battle. Yeah. And uh, yeah, awesome cleric and paladin come out victorious with the help of our comrades. And we retire <laughs> to the Temple of Sunni. That's how it ends. Sorry, I was dragging it. I was all over the place, but Anyway, it's a good episode. It was funny. Dr Frank was drunk off his ass. So, yeah, it was hilarious. I so. was not singing monkey tunes. So, I was. He was about to. <laughs> Daydream Believer came up in, in Green. I would have danced. Oh, yeah. So. Hey, the good news is I think that's one of the few urban scenarios I've ever run where I didn't fling poo at you guys. So, there's Thank that. You came close. I can't, wasn't there a vomit or something? Or no, it was the burned corpse. Ah, something no, no, on. it was the guy pissing in the alley. <laughs> That's right. And, and you forgot the greatest moment. Uh, what was that? For the players. Uh, the dice giveth and the dice taketh away. The uh, mean 
cleric BBG at the end put a uh, glyphs of warning on the oh, door yeah. that he went through, and it was thunder. And I rolled forty-eight for a grand total of eight because I rolled four fucking twos. <laughs> and good thing the cleric and the paladin yes. were wearing armor. <laughs> God, four twos on that roll. I could have done some serious damage. He could have did some serious damage. Yeah. But folks, both of those uh, scenarios are uh, still on Twitch. They are in our archive. They're even on our audio-only archive if you don't want to look at the money makers. Uh, and all those links are floating around somewhere below. If you can't find it, just hit us up at uh, Twitter or Gmail, mhobo Inc. Uh, and that goes for if you want to play in this Saturday's one-shot game. Uh, I believe the key term for Saturday is shanghai uh, so you can imagine what and I'm. And you going called to do. me racist in the green room earlier. And this is what uh, you're yeah, coming up with. Yeah, this is wow. what you come up with. Frank. Come on, wow! It's in the dictionary wow. as a noun. It so is an actual nerd. Could have used keel hauled. Yeah, keel hauled. Shut up, yeah. Ian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> waylaid. Ian, Ian's not Ooh, coming waylaid. back. <laughs> Uh, I like Shanghai. You guys kiss my ass. Uh, Kyle, <laughs> the show is yeah. yours for the really important part anyway, because everybody's like, oh, Iron DM. I want to see how bad they can bungle this. So, is that yeah, tonight? Well, where we're going to screw tonight, this yeah. up big time? How? Well, Remember uh, you cheated and sent out all the information first, and there was no die rolls? Turned me into a liar. Turned you into a liar. What? Hey, yeah, we I am roll for not shit, complaining, man. man. Oh, we don't always roll for shit. I usually send us stuff ahead of time. I'm going to ask you random things. Oh, okay. uh, 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 yeah, so it's the 400th, uh, and it's an iron DM, and I thought to myself, 400, how could I make that special? And I was like, you know what? I have kids, and I've spent $400 on a Build-A-Bear. Build-A-Bear. Build-A-Bazaar! Oh. Uh. Wow, that's harsh. Uh, that no, harsh. that was me running. It's uh, accurate. Running but... on for our favorite producer, Carrie. <laughs> that was me running on earlier. So anyway. So tonight I sent uh, two of these people uh, half an hour before the show began several questions asking them to build a bazaar slash marketplace, something unique, something worthy of an Iron DM, something that I'm going to steal from them similar to the dwarves who eat metal from uh, uh, Ian's last time. Oh, cool. Iron that DM. worked into mm-hmm. something. Or, yeah, uh, absolutely. I love that. Cool. Uh, uh, my <laughs> players love it too. Not the cred players, the other ones. <laughs> so I need to pick your <laughs> brains again as they, my players head to the bazaar slash marketplace. Uh, uh, and while, yes, Frank is a terrible, awful cheater, who looked at all the questions first thing this morning and then spent the entire day coming up with an amazing bizarre that is not going to be trumped by anyone else here because he's had so much time to create it. And he Shit, he's got cartography. Car- I mean, Kylie, he has cartography for the He's day. got cartography, yeah. Uh, got this cartography. scenario is almost <laughs> gone. <laughs> And the best part is you tell them that this is what you've been working on, but then you actually ask questions about like, What's your favorite root vegetable? And tell us about your root vegetable like merchants and like just completely just throw all this work. Yeah, out. he was throwing all that out at us. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Folks, honestly, I was hoping that somebody at the 11th hour would take my place so I would not have to deal with this horse shit. <laughs> <laughs> tell us how you really feel. Yeah, Frank. Boy. It's a Kyle Iron. Hold DM. on. I've got an hard. idea. One of the vendors is a horse shit keeper. All right. That's it. Brilliant. Um, His name is Steve. Are you reading this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Frank, you know I've been to your place and put the cameras in. <laughs> Only in the bathroom. Hey, Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's start off with we'll go around the table. Since Frank had so much time to come up with stuff, we will go ahead and start with Ian instead. And that way we can be wowed and amazed by what Frank has come up with. Uh, Ian, 
what is this bazaar slash marketplace and uh, what makes it unique? What's its name? Uh, so I started getting kind of a, an inspiration from Troika, probably because that was the last thing that I ran. What? And um, David was a survivor of that. So thinking about uh, a bizarre, the bizarre of broken things. So from the very get-go, when someone that would approach this, it would be in a kind of quintessential like al Qadim kind of city uh, planar setting or something almost like Tatooine. Those kind of clay, big, um, clay baked buildings, alleyway, lots of merchants, either people that are selling wares on carpets or in, in tents or kind of those just like uh, shade poles. Uh, but the initial first wave of vendors would all look like they are peddling things that are items that are literally broken, things that are recycled, things that have been picked up from the trash or second grade food or salvaged things. There also be repair booths. But all of that is just kind of window trappings for the lower class or caste citizens. But it's more towards the back, towards the senior elements is where you actually start getting into like more true face of the, the bazaar. And ultimately, the bazaar itself is peddling secrets, um, true names, broken oaths, and other things. So you have vendors that are dealing in, in much more potent but esoteric wares, or I'm just kind of dealing with that. But how, how detailed of a level do you want to go right now? Mer like specific merchants, sp factions, guide me, Kyle. You're muted. <laughs> I like to be muted. My mic is broken. It belongs in the bazaar of broken things. See? It does. That, is, <laughs> that is apropos. That's the, se the secret is I just press the mute button and that also belongs in the bazaar of broken things in the back. Apropos. That is actually is it made perfect. Made in America? <laughs> what? Did you say made in America? I'm made uh. in Native America. Uh, <laughs> no, that, Ian, that's perfect. Uh, let's move on to David. David, what is your bazaar? What okay. makes it unique? What's its name? The bazaar is actually a quarter in, in part of a city called Mystere, and the name of the quarter is called the Shadow District. So, and within that, there's uh, there's a few shops along uh, one of its uh, more darkest streets. Uh, three shops uh, in particular stand out. One is uh, the shop of uh, of a diviner, I guess that's the term for it. I guess uh, diviner or diviner. Diviner, I think probably diviner. So, are we using magic to look things up? Yeah, this we are. Find the future. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. Um, pretty much. I mean, the the city is kind of like a pre-colonial type city i mean could be like water water deep or something like that but really reflective of like pre-colonial new orleans you know i'm going with it it was something that i was working on anyway uh so along the streets there are three shops there's the one that is the shop of the card reader uh the the shopkeeper is named minerva and she uh, does readings, uh, Taroka cards, uh, spirit board, things like that. One of the things that she also has, she sells potions and also filters of love. But one of the items that stands out the most are the candles of wishes. And what they are, they're similar to the candles that you find in, in the French Quarter in Louisiana at the Voodoo Museum and the Voodoo Shops and things like that that are basically like Santeria candles and stuff like that. And they are of dark patron saints, but some are like, you know, uh, you know a patron of love, a patron of revenge. And uh, they're all different colors and stuff like that. And if you light the candles, say a prayer, or whatever your wishes, get carried out and usually it's not the way that you think it's gonna go <laughs> so as it is with all wishes so so yeah so that is that shop that is minerva uh sure. yeah now uh, uh with this shadow district uh you kind of painted this picture in my mind uh is this a bazaar strictly for this is not for the commonplace people unless uh -uh. they want to go for something unique, interesting. They're not buying fruit. 
carpets or anything like that. They're no, they're no. there for the good stuff. One way they're or there for the good stuff. All right. All right. Well, it's for for the people that are like, I don't know. It could be a goth family or something like that. <laughs> so, but yeah, there is a. Uh, that's pretty much the shadow district. It's it's heavily influenced by, let's say literature jk rowland's diagon diagon alley you know in harry potter series possibly a secret entrance possibly yes, Ooh, yes. All right. it's in there. we'll let you uh <laughs> ponder on that a little bit we'll go over to frank <clears throat> bazaar uh and then we'll start discussing those shopkeepers a little bit more especially i want to hear more about this minerva lady uh frank what's your bazaar what's its uh, name and what makes it so unique it is the Bazaar of Lotani, which is the region of Lotani. It's uh, mostly Fae-esque. It has two indigenous populations. Uh, one is basically human. Uh, the other is wood elves. And uh, keeping uh, in the time of the year that we are in, this uh, bazaar is more like a county fair. However, uh, the wood elves and the indigenous humans do not get along. And during this fair, there is a truce. And during this truce, uh, they have a kind of non-friendly competition to see which group can ply more wares than the other. Now, along with the two different groups, uh, you know, other groups, gnomes, dwarves, uh, half-breeds, things of that nature, also live in the area, they come to the fair to check on the wares. So at the end of the bazaar, they go ahead and tally up the marks, and it's kind of a uh, non-existent trophy uh, if the humans sell more of their wares than the wood elves or vice versa. Uh, they use giant mushrooms as canopies, uh, because even though it's in the fey land, it's kind of in the you know mossy covered area that's uh, by a swamp so instead of colorful tents uh they use toadstools giant freaking toadstools uh and, and sometimes the humans or the wood elves uh, will go into the tents per se and cross pollinate the mushrooms causing stench issues was that a euphemism or? No, uh, the cross pollination causes the toadstools to rot quickly. Uh, ergo, this particular booth slash toadstool stinks, uh, keeping potential uh, customers away. This sounds like a horrible bizarre. To come yeah. <laughs> it's it's like the sharks and the jets, man. These two groups do not like <laughs> each other. Uh, but there is there there is a uh, no hostility policy because there should be no harassment policy at festivals. Uh, and uh, that does not mean that underhanded dirty tricks do not play a part in the bazaar of Lotani. And that sounds like the perfect place to actually go shopping. It's chaos. Is it, is it like a once a year kind of deal? As, it is as once a, fair, a year. It, it's just like the county fairs here in Indiana and every other state. Uh, you get together, you show your wares. Uh, sometimes people will buy your livestock just to eat them so that your small children can understand that the more love and effort you put into raising something, uh, it makes it taste better. This sounds like a, a personal story, and I don't I, want I was to not a 4 h or I was a Boy Scout, very bad oh, okay. Boy Scout. <laughs> Clearly a very bad Boy Scout. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back down to you, Ethan, before we go further into this. Who the fuck's uh, Ethan? <laughs> okay. Ethan? My next door neighbor Ethan. I've been living next to for three years calls me Eden. I've written my name on greeting cards and all these things, and uh, I never leave a voice from like, your neighbor Eden. I get Eden. But I take it as a term of endearment. Although, quick fun awesome. fact, as a shout out, if anyone else is an Eden who's here, there is a Facebook Council of Eden uh, Facebook group and half of our posts are about how no one can get our three letters right. So, nice. anywho, that's, so. That's, a, that's a good story, Ian. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say that. Dude, that gets a lot. It's Ian. all right, Frankie Pie. <laughs> Frankenberry Crunch. 
Uh, well, well, thank you, our benevolent producer. Uh, uh, suck up. <laughs> <laughs> Eat it, Dr. Frank. That's true. That's <laughs> Francis for you right there. All right, Kyle. Um, All right. How, how should I take this? I have a whole page of well, notes. We I just know. heard about the uh, the elves and the humans. Uh, what are your two major factions that are operating uh, at the bazaar sure. of broken things? And, you know, what are their ulterior motives? Sure. So I have three factions that are kind of involved um, in the, the power struggles. The, the two major pillars of, of power uh, is the Lodge of the uh, Oniri, and they are uh, a cabal of sorcerers, illusionists, uh, jinn or jinn half-breeds or, or um, in that kind of family tree, or people with extra planar ties. Their function is that they are looking for uh, the true names of individuals or to scry steal things from people's dreams as a way to subjugate individuals to control them for individual power. Uh, so in essence, they are like a, a, a psychology group, if you will, because analogously, the other major power structure uh, are the Eater of Whispers, which are the rumor mongers, the collectors of secrets, the spreaders of false information. They seek to control <laughs> groups of peoples and their opinions for the highest bidder. So there's a, a power war for that type of information, which that could be used to control others or could be extrapolated to groups. And a third intermediary group is one that is neither aligned to others, but is the Confederates of the trash pickers. So these are people that are from low castes in these civilizations or people who either it's a cell based organization where um, they are actually literally picking trash through landfills or through refuse or night soil workers. Uh, they're actually collecting broken items to be sold in the market, but those that have worked themselves into the organization will um, be used as agents to acquire secrets and information uh, because of being low caste individuals, they are not really, no one pays them much attention. So they are great espionage individuals, uh, spies and assassins in the more elite circles. Um, the Waja Nirai is far, it actually does have a physical location, but it's not proximal to this bazaar. Um, but at people that are high ranking enough will have the abilities to open portal into their lodge, which looks like a cross between the gates of Ishtar for a Babylonian architect and art people with a mixture of David Lynch's Black Lodge, but in a blue motif uh, where they conduct their extra planar rituals. Eater Whispers has no central location per se, as they can meet anywhere there are people, but in clandestine, so we have an opportunity for your alignment slash uh, guild language usage. And the Confederates of Trash Pickers also have a minor power center in the bazaar itself, but are diffuse in whatever cityscape that they are put into. Frank, David. You got to give me something real good now. He's you got to give me something real He's great. He's one. <laughs> <laughs> he wins. That's all there is to it. Oh, don't say that, David. You could plow him right over. Oh, plow no, Ian no. I don't know. Right out of the way. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, David, what are your two major factions that are going on in the Shadow District mm -hmm. uh, Bazaar of yours? And uh, what are their ulterior motives? What are their names? Are my okay. ears of whispers there? No, I'm just kidding. No, they're not. But they're but maybe they will be soon. Yes, yes. Uh, actually, the the Shadow District is uh, actually ran by even as um, you know uh, ominous and all that as it may sound. It's just like these are legitimate shop shopkeepers. They don't necessarily have like malice in mind or anything like that. But you know, it's just. It's the kind of place you go to if you have a problem or something like that, that, you know, you can find an answer there pretty much, you know. I mean, we're talking kind of like, um, uh, let's just say it's a, these guild of shopkeepers. Uh, they, uh, that's, that's what they do. It's just like, you know, they have like dark knowledge, things like that, you know. And of course there is, there is part of a, you know, like a roguish element to it, but, you know, it's one of those things like, for example, to find the district itself, you actually have to walk through a tavern and out the back door and then, you know, and 
it appears is pretty much i absolutely love that idea yeah this is the shadow district bazaar right perfectly actually legitimate act- business people they don't lie they just do their business and that's that you got a problem take it up with them they'll take care of you exactly so <laughs> uh the the like the tavern itself is set on an alley and then the alley is actually ran back uh is right next it runs alongside the temple or the cathedral <clears throat> in the in this square and yeah and it's known for pirates and the you know roguish figures or whatever it, for that alley and they go to the spa and you know so but anyway the opposing faction for that would be the church trying to clap down on you know uh the dark arts and dark magic and whatever within being practiced within the city or the quarter itself so but um but yeah so and one of the things are is if you if you if they suspect that you're a church member or that you're investigating them or anything like that it's just like you know by the time you leave the alley it's uh it's kind of has a ward on 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 the alley itself once you leave it you forget it's there so it's just like you know it's just you know where where was i <laughs> you know why why am i at this bar <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. why do i need medicine <laughs> yeah, exactly why do i have this rash <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, probably getting too close to kyle that's just a guess a little <laughs> bit uh I'm just getting a little itchy here. Take care of that. Oh, but oh my God, Ian, man, just the stuff you come up with. <laughs> it's just like, uh, it's just no, prior, no, yeah. honestly, he's working hard at that. He's overdoing it. But David, I see awesome legitimacy in this shadow district where the way you're describing it, it's, you know, the shadowy dark arts are being completely legitimate businessmen. And this church of light and goodness is being completely underhand. Mm -hmm. And you send a party in there and they're going to absolutely go topsy-turvy, not have a clue what's going on. (laughs) Pretty much. You can't trust the diviner. They'll just tell you something and make you do something. (laughs) Now the church, they know what they're talking about. You got to listen to them. Right. (laughs) Oh, man. All right. Yeah. I, I, I get the feeling that his is the festival of Rufy. <laughs> oh, man. you just forget what happened. <laughs> it's right up in all alley. <laughs> right. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Mature audience. Oh, that is some great sleep. Uh, I, I've never slept so well since smuggling the rag myself. I don't know if I said smuggling or smelling the rag. I I do both, honestly. Oh, man. You need to take a nap at work. You just smuggle that rag in, give it a good whiff, and you're out. Is that one of those upcoming adventure sense scents that we can buy? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. (laughs) Remember, adventure sense from Odd Fish Games for all your smelling needs. Hey, can you smell this? The roofie packet. (laughs) Yeah. Bonus points if you open one of the cans like in a crowded elevator, especially like. They like the welcoming in with the hearty beef stew smell. <laughs> or you can try out their the new title of the pack, pack is the Russian party. roulette pack. <laughs> so. Does this smell like I'm about to get lucky? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had so much fun with their sense at Hoosier Con, what, 2015? I don't know. Hey, if you're going to Gen Con this year, they could use a little help with the booth. They can. They can. That's true. Ask yeah. for the Russian roulette set. Sorry Five normal that. smells, one rupee packet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and oh, man, this is they're, they're watch- sewers. <laughs> <laughs> they're watching this show going, no, 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 Russian roulette pack. Anyway, Frank, uh, you were going to tell us a little bit more about your bazaar. You already gave us our two factions, so uh, why don't we dig into uh, what what in general are we going to find there? 
And then uh, what kind of shopkeepers you got over there specifically for us? They are they are more possessed with trying to beat the other side. Uh, you are going to find a lot of repeat items. Uh, and depending on who arrives last, they will move their booth directly across from the competing faction. Uh, and as it is in a fey landscape, there are some magical inducements that both sides have learned to use uh, to kind of combat any, shall we say, um, industrial espionage techniques. Uh, so it, it's, while, while a truce has been declared, uh, you can, as a uh, participant, you can wander down the main aisle and look at, uh, say, perhaps uh, elusive scents from the wild uh, or elusive scents from the wild until you move to the next place where it might be a health drink uh, by Whoa, uh, deja vu. by uh, a, a certain merchant. So uh, a lot of the things uh, for this aspect I did I guess already cover a little bit early, uh, but sprinkled in between all of these other booths are booths from other non-competing areas. So you do have that third faction, if you will, and these people are just interested in making money and sell their goods. They know that uh, it's a weapon-free zone. Uh, there's a truce, albeit tenuous, uh, but uh, there's the chance to make some real coin uh, because if you sell something good, both factions will steal that idea and sell it the following year so that they can make as much Mark coin as you can. <laughs> so. That sounds like it's an entirely annoying place to try and sell items. Uh, if you think of any Jersey-based jokes, that would be what it is. Hey, what are you going to sell that for? <laughs> Only think of it as a wood elf. So like, hey, we you going to sell that for? Not high elf. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> not yeah. high elf. Those guys are assholes. Wood right. elf. Frank's created the Tanger Outlet stores. I was thinking like Pennsylvania elves, like wooder, wooder elves. Ooh, no. You know what? Let's make the Pennsylvania Dutch the humans. <laughs> Uh, and uh, the Swedish guys from Family Guy is the Wood Elves. <laughs> oh man! Oh no! You stuff in my pee. <laughs> yeah, but you have—it's it, just a straight line with third-party booths sprinkled intermittently because the third party do not use the colorful toadstools because they've been there before and they know that they'll get caught in the crossfire. Wow. <laughs> So are we avoiding the humans and the elves while we're at this bazaar and just going through the third party stops? Otherwise, it's just a bunch of junk. And No, because uh, there, there are a variety of different goods and services available on either side. But any wise participant will realize you can set them off against each other for a bidding war. So if uh, say a human is selling colorful milkweed that uh, acts as an ED deterrent. The wood elves will have the same thing, but you can kind of uh, haggle on the prices, pitting them against each other because each side wants to win your business. So they're willing to really drop the price off. So this is a bargain buyer's delight. I should have named it Nightmare El Cheapo. for all DMs. <laughs> That's right. This is an El Cheapo Bazaar. Yeah, I'd like this great sword of vengeance, but I saw this other elf had it over there for only 50,000 gold. That's right. <laughs> you know, think of how many different lemon shakeups you can get at a county fair. Same concept. <laughs> oh, okay. They're all at the only one is bad. good. And the one that's good is probably the one that's also not washing their lemons before they cut and juice them. It's citrus. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> citrus doesn't go bad. <laughs> you realize that all did turn conventional citrus is dyed and waxed without being washed first. Not at our bazaar, because we only use all natural products. Our bullshit is made from the finest bulls. 
well, you're, I hope there's a thriving Tiki community that's just living in the wake of this bizarre because I, I would. I mean, I'm just thinking E. coli prick out or something. Why, why do you like think that? there's giant toadstools? That has to scream classy. <laughs> Come for the lemons, stay for the spores. There yeah, exactly. All right, we got somewhat of a limited time here, so let's knock down our three shopkeeps. Uh, let's knock them down to two. Let's see how far we can get along with that. Uh, oh, Ian, man, now I got to pick one. <laughs> uh, man, you only yeah. had two? No, I had three. I got to pick one to ditch. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, all right. What do we got, Ian? Uh, well, I'll, I'll list the three, and you can pick the two that you want to hear most about. Done. Uh, so I have, um, well, one that actually doesn't have a name. Uh, it looks to be one of the, the trash the trash pickers. Um, carpets uh with items in it uh, and the person that's running it is an emaciated man who is very dirty with a hessian um happen tabard but with a tight fitting very clean turban uh then there is the trigger of broken oaths operated uh by a man who's perpetually wearing a robe that covers most of his skin uh hard to discern his features but the inside of his tent uh, is completely draped with different oaf scrolls from various strings that are hanging in the booth itself and then lastly, there is the Merchant of Curses, uh, who has a very slight, almost you'd think like a reptilian uh, prominence to his features, uh, but hard to actually discern it. Um, and you see there's multiple different objects inside of a tent on different tables, and there are rugs inside. What are the two you want to know more about? I definitely, I want the dichotomy of the low caste to the secrets and stuff like that. So I definitely want to hear a little bit more about the trash pickers rug. Um, sure. Uh, so it's the trash picker is uh, Mahir Bohani, and it is actually the leader of the fellowship of the trash pickers. And um, the objects that are on the carpet itself, all of them are literally just, there's nothing special about them. None of them are magical objects, but they are broken household goods. Things can be obviously repaired. Uh, and for some reason, all the items in there are not things that have been fixed. There are vendors that, and people that hawk services to the right and left of them that would repair any of these for a very small fee. But the items that all of the, all the items there are of low worth. Um, but that is part of the pretense that you can interact and haggle over some of these items, talk about the provenance, and then in code speak is able to start to negotiate deals. Uh, with his splinter agents across his things. Uh, likewise, the people that are on the time on the side are offering repair services. Uh, if for people that are able to speak the language, can also further negotiate deals um, and and help to send those off. The uh, merchant, so the uh, the trader of broken oats, is ran by Abdul Lakib uh, Yasha Sabri. Um, the tent is perpetually kind of in a shady gloom, illuminated by a diffuse glow that kind of comes in from the high noon sun through the, the kind of burlapy, thick, high material of the tent. Um, but there's also kind of an odd glow that doesn't necessarily radiate from any objects. The interior of the tent strong smelly, smells strongly of like charred cin- uh, cardamom, baked blood, and caked India ink. And you see all manner of these different types of scrolls written in different languages and different penmanships. So ideally, this booth would be for literally purchasing broken oaths. And so instead of like having this bazaar where you're buying a lot of functional items for players or just magic items straight out of the DMG, let's say you had a paladin that broke an oath and lost their paladin abilities. That broken oath could be found here. Through whatever passageways that that makes its way through the multiverse, Someone like this vendor would get those. And that boy is, this is a hook that you could use to control that person. You could pay off their debt so they're indebted to you. You can have an opportunity to rebuy something that you lied about or broke or or something like that. So you could even redeem yourself in a capacity. So these broken oaths are extremely powerful. And thus, usually you're not traded directly in coin, but in a different debt it could be traded for or for some other item of power or some secret that is strong enough that would warrant trading a broken oath. But at the same time, if you have like an NPC, an antagonist, a powerful entity or something, if they have a broken oath there and a PC could buy that, imagine what power they have. 
Kind of reminds me of Soul Coins with uh, Boulder's Gate descent to Avernus. Mm -hmm. and all that. That's the currency that they had uh, coins oh. from you know, formed from like souls, things like that. So okay. that's what okay. that reminds me. Of. That's awesome. That is I'm awesome. getting a mortgage, predatory mortgage guy. There you go. <laughs> he knows a guy. He knows a guy. He knows a guy. <laughs> You want I'm a thinking, flexible uh, rate mortgage? Aragon and that ghost army. That sounds like, yeah, you broke an oath. It's fallen on to me now, and you have to do my bidding right now. Oh, uh, in very simple terms. I purchased right? your debt. Start somewhere from there, and you go up from there. So that I was going to ask you what some of the broken arms story, but you got to it. So we'll move on to David. Oh, I got uh, nothing, We had man. Minerva. <laughs> You're fine, David. Let's go. All right. There's Minerva, but there's also Phineas Oddfellow. Odd, okay. Oddfellow, <laughs> Oddfellow's books, rarities, and oddities. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, he's a dealer in dark gifts. So, yeah. You say so gifts? You want this random gifts. book in order Not to, gifts. Uh... You know, not like. Some stupid gift. <laughs> just goes over and over again. It's yeah, just it just terrible. keeps playing over and over again. So da, we're da, talking. Da, 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 da. <laughs> so we're yeah. talking. Uh, we're we're talking. You know things like uh, rare tomes and things like that. You know things that have been looted from like uh, probably ancient tombs and things like that. Cursed items. Some of them. Hobby lobby. Yeah. Exactly. I there we go. It's a Hobby Lobby. <laughs> <laughs> that's the other faction store. <laughs> so, that's the that's the church's store. Uh, yeah. So it, it's it's pretty much that. I mean, uh, if there there is something that you're you're in particular that you're looking for, Phineas has an, you know, he'll have what you're looking for <laughs> in out of ten times you know so or he knows a person that can get it for you so as a matter of fact one of the things that phineas runs out he runs adventurers out of his store to find particular artifacts or items and things like that his store is kind of like a tardis it is larger on the inside like the storeroom you open it up and it's like warehouse 13 it's just a mass um, massive like an extra dimensional space. All right, quick question. How many people have gotten lost and have possibly died in Phineas's store or had their soul trapped in a book? Uh, I don't know. Only Phineas knows that answer. <laughs> <laughs> Two horses. <All> right. <laughs> or he doesn't now. <laughs> you know, he's like, mm. <laughs> he keeps the abacus and he keeps track of who comes in, who goes out. Pretty much, always just yeah. a few beads missing every day. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. All right, I dig Phineas and Minerva. All right, uh, yeah. Frank, uh, come on, give me your two best. Give me your two uh, best. I'm gonna go with Weenus the Healthy. Uh, he's the wood <laughs> elf, he speaks uh, with a southern accent. Uh, so I was incorrect earlier, it's not Swedish. It's Southern because he sells an energy drink called White Lightning uh, that can cause some visual acuity issues. We yeah. know Healthy has a very persistent cough, much like me, and he cannot control it. So his name is, on the surface at least, a misnomer, but he promises you a great deal of energy when you consume his White Lightning. Uh, the other one is uh, part of neither faction, and that she or it, it, uh, I'll explain in a minute, is Tota the Midget. Uh, there are chin hairs present. Uh, looks a lot like Pat from Saturday Night Live. Uh, goes by no pronouns and uh, its sexuality is dubious at best. But Tota is fine, so that's not a big deal. Uh, the problem with Tota is uh, Tota is a baker. Uh, and while uh, Toda themself uh, has a certain degree of aromatic pungence, uh, the bread smells really good. The only problem is when you cut a slice and eat it, initially 
Uh, it appears on the surface that it is raisin bread. However, the raisins oh. are crunchy and taste acrid. So the bread itself is good, but you do have to pick the raisins out oh, of them. God, I'm getting uh, strong, like, Slaneshi Bakery vibe here, slash <laughs> something maybe out of, like, Ogloff comics. And oh. Toda, Toda's ability is the cantrip Gust. So Toda can cast Gust, and the smell, the lovely inviting smell of the bread will invite people in there. But that first bite is... Uh... Wow. Wow. Oh, oh, different. Oh. <laughs> I'm thoroughly disgusted, and I feel like I want to end the show right now. Uh, Ian, thank you so much for your bizarre, broken things. Yes, I David, love it. your shadow district. Frank, I'm not thanking you for anything. That <laughs> you ruined it all. You picked you picked the wrong one to leave out. Uh, Mulva, the local spinster who uses crude language. You know what? Very you know touchy what? You and sells right. erotic undergarments. <laughs> oh, Guys, man, this is man, the man. Iron DM. Comment below if you're watching this on YouTube or send us a, a message via email, Twitter, uh, over at our Discord. Tell us who won this Iron DM. Frank, David, or Ian. It is none of us because we have had to listen to Frank I, I think I think and our our watchers won this one. Yes, for yes. Or putting up with us for four hundred episodes. episodes. And <laughs> our sponsors for sponsoring us for four hundred episodes. That's Pirate yes, Dog Dice exactly. on Fish Games. Sure. Guys, I'm not going to go through the spiel because I think I might throw up with the Tota thing still. Yeah. So everyone, wave at the camera. You yeah. know the spiel already at this point. Love yeah. you. Good night. Bye. Bye.